But, uh, you know, you already did talk about some of the linebackers that, you know, and special teamers you've taken a look at on film, Devin White, Eric Kendricks, some of the special teamers, Matthew Slater. Um, you know, I imagine that a lot of that was in like kind of that pre-draft process, right? Mm -hmm. So taking a, a deeper look at that pre-draft process, how were workouts, you know, pro days, the combine, other factors during that process? Wow. And, you know, obviously a pandemic type environment. That's tough. You know, yeah. and that's that's been something, you know, obviously the past year, year and a half where everybody's been saying like, hey, is really tough for these young guys coming into the league because, you know, opportunities are, you know, shrinking up with, you know, the pandemic and everything and even going to get a workout is tough. So, like, how was that that pre-draft prospect or pre-draft prospects process rather uh, with workouts, pro day, combine, just in general, but also especially in the pandemic type environment? Um, actually I have a YouTube channel mm -hmm. and on my YouTube channel, I documented all of this. So if anybody's curious or if you're curious, you can I, check that. I will have this linked by the way, down right. in, the, in the, in the pinned comment, in the comment section, I will 1000% yeah. have that linked. And, uh, this weekend I should be putting out my, uh, like the video from like the day of the draft, like when we got the call and everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, that, that whole process, you know, it was a roller coaster for sure. Um, you know, I went into the, went into the whole process, anticipating myself to be drafted somewhere in the fifth round. Um, just from looking at drafts past from knowing what type of 40 I was capable of running, um, knowing how I was going to do at the senior bowl and all that confidence I had in just the future. Like I thought I was like, just like predicting everything was going to happen. Just kind of crumbled, um, uh, during, during training one day. Um, so I'm training one day and I know I'm at, at some point I'm going to have to get this surgery. I knew I was going to have to get it. Um, but I definitely thought I could get it after this entire process. Right. Um, right after pro day, get my surgery, be ready for training camp. You know, that was my goal. Right. Um, and so I, um, I am doing my 40 yard dash training uh, up at Exos in Frisco. Best, one of the best facilities you can go to for sure. Mm -hmm. And Brent Calloway was working with me and there's something they were asking me to do um, in regards to sprinting. I just couldn't do it. Um, like my hip wouldn't let me and it was, it was like really sore the next day. So I was just like, okay, I'm just going to relax. I'm just going to do the senior bowl and then I'm going to get surgery after the senior bowl. And then I'm just not going to do a pro day. Right. Um, and so I ended up still just like trying to stay in shape and working on my coverage stuff. And, mm -hmm. and then I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and do the sprint workouts without doing that thing I can't do. Um, and just to keep my conditioning up. And so if you're not using the right technique and stuff, then you know, I pulled my hamstring um, during training. Um, and I pulled it like it was grade two pool. It was 10 days before the senior bowl. And it was like, I couldn't do anything. And they like, they told me like two weeks, you'll be fine. Okay. Senior bowl, t 10 days. So, um, uh, rehab that, um, was, was like at 80%, a couple of days before the senior bowl, they said, okay, look, we're going to try it out see how you feel. We're going to do a couple exercises. We're going to run around and stuff. I was running around all the type of stuff. I pulled it again. So <laughs> two days before senior bowl, I pulled it again. Um, and I'm not like a hamstring guy. I never had a hamstring issue. It was just like, oh my gosh, what is going on? It's the worst timing. Yeah. Um, and so I was just like, okay, look, I'm gonna go to the senior bowl. Hopefully I just will be able to do something. <laughs> and, um, so I went to the senior bowl and it was very difficult. Um, like the day before the first practice, you had like your first meetings with all the NFL teams and had to tell all the teams like, well, yeah, I'm about to get this surgery and I had this surgery and then I got a hamstring. It just made me yeah. like, <laughs> so like, oh yeah. And you're not even six foot tall. Like, no, nah, we're good. Um, and uh, so ended up being okay. Um, I didn't do one-on-ones the first day cause I knew I couldn't sprint, um, but it ended up being all right. I was able to move in the box and show them I can, you know, tackle in the run game, which is I think what they were concerned about with my size and getting off blocks and all that stuff. Um, and so senior bowl, really good in special teams. I feel like I had a good impression there didn't run in my, I had a surgery, so I didn't run it pro day, anything like that. I did my bench press. I ended up raising $5,300 for sex trafficking, which was awesome yeah. or against sex trafficking. Sorry. Um, <laughs> which was awesome. But, um, uh, so it was a good experience and, um, 
you know, during that whole process, I was meeting with a lot of teams, um, never met with the Buccaneers a single time, uh, met with, you know, some teams of like seven times, some teams five times. There's teams I was just like, there's no way they're going to let this draft happen and they don't grab me. Right. Um, and so there was a lot of teams who jokingly told me, like, just tell teams like not to pick you so that we're able to get you. Like, you know, there was teams I was – I was glad that there were some teams that were transparent with me. They were like, hey, we only have three picks in the draft. Um, we're just going to offer you a free agent deal at the end of the draft, but we're going to match whatever deal, whatever is like, you're probably going to get drafted, but if you don't, like, we want you because we only have three picks and we're not going to pick a linebacker with those picks. So I'm like, okay, like, those teams were cool, but there were some teams that, like, made me feel like they were going to draft me and they didn't. Um, so, you know, day of the draft or day three of the draft, uh, all these teams called me in the morning and, um, during the draft, I'm like looking at certain teams. One of the teams had three picks in the seventh round. So I'm like, are they like, there's no way I'm getting out of this round or the, or the seventh round. So I'm telling teams in the sixth round, like, if y'all don't pick me here, I'm gonna be gone. You know, and, right. and my, my agent is too. And so just like watching the draft and being like, like, whoa, like long snapper, like what's going on? You know, like, right. <laughs> like, right. like it was, you know, like, uh, like it's a long snap for six round. Like, what are we doing? Like, right. Was really right. Um, and you know, so, you know, my lady took me in a room and she, you know, prayed with me, calmed me down and just told me like, it's going to be fine. And I had made a free, I made a free agent deal. You know, I, I figured out where I wanted to go in free agency. There was a team that had been talking to me for a long time. They didn't have a pick in the seven. They, uh, they didn't pick any linebackers. Like I knew what my role was going to be. I felt confident about making the team would have been the highest signing bonus in all the free agencies. So I was like, yeah, let's do that. And I wasn't super excited about it um, because there was a vision I had with, you know, having this type of home, this, you know, having my siblings and all this type of stuff. And I didn't feel like that place was going to be really realistic. Um, so just got surprised at the end of the draft when the Buccaneers called me and uh, saw my name on the screen and turns up. And I was just like <laughs> excited to come learn behind, you know, Levante and, and be white and yeah. just get to work. Yeah, so kind of you you just mentioned it, you know, talking about getting drafted by the defending Super Bowl champions. So you had no idea that was going to happen. I mean, they already drafted KJ, and I was excited for KJ. You know, I was like, I played with KJ at the Senior Bowl. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's uh, that. I was I was thinking, I never thought about the Buccaneers because I was like, okay, they don't need me. <laughs> like, why why would they get me? Um, like. Um, and so when I got KJ, I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like, he's going to go learn behind, like, those two. Like, I was going to call him at, after the draft and, like, talk to him and all type of stuff. And then for them to get me, I was like, oh, snap. Like, <laughs> like immediately I'm, like, Googling, like, okay, is Levante – is somebody gone? Did they – like, did yeah. somebody get traded? <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, uh, I was so excited about it, man. And, uh, you know, just – you know, Coach Arians has been my favorite coach for years. Um, and I just thought it was like, you know, I mean, I've told my friend, like when, when he was on the Cardinals, there's a guy named, uh, by the last name Buchanan, uh, and, um, playing linebacker for him on the Cardinals. And he was same size as me and he was starting, he was making a whole bunch of plays. So being a high schooler, I was like, I saw that I could do it. Like yeah. there was somebody same size as me, smaller than me. Yeah. Starting at middle linebacker, like yeah. and plays in the, in the NFL. And so, um, being that, Coach Arians um, and his staff, like, were okay with him playing there, even though he was small. Like, back then, it was a little more un, un it was a little more unorthodox for smaller linebackers to be starting than it is now. You know, 2013, 2014, whenever I saw him playing. Um, so, yeah, I've always liked Coach Arians, and uh, I was, like, just, like, hearing him talk to me on the phone. Like, I have watched so much stuff about him and, like, his teams and his culture. Like, I was just, like, I, I already knew what, like – what he asks of his players, you know, what, you know, what culture he wants to have in his, in his, uh, building. And I mean, that is something that I wanted so bad, uh, at the next level, you know, being in college, um, you have some guys that aren't really bought in. Like I talked about earlier, they feel like, Oh, I have next year or something. And I was just hoping that at the, at the NFL level, that I would be able to have the confidence in everybody on the team that, you know, they were going to be bought into it and, and I could just maximize myself, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I already know what, what BA is on, you know what I'm saying? So it just, 
it made me really excited, man. Yeah. Um, and that's so it's basically a match made in heaven, literally. You know, yeah. in terms of the the fit, the home fit, just everything, every aspect of it, you know, and, and you were sitting there going, man, I'm really happy for KJ. He's going to learn from Levante and Devin White. That's going to be <laughs> awesome. And then you're like, OK, I guess now I'm going to be learning from Levante yeah, and Dave, yeah. Devin White. All right. Sounds good. You know, like yeah. oh, this is great. Um, If you don't mind me asking, what were those? You know, you talked about how there were a lot of teams interested in you in terms of both drafting and, you know, free agent deals. You know, what who were those teams that were saying like, hey, Grant, you know, we're going to be thinking about drafting. You're like, hey, we might not be able to draft you, but we'd like to sign you to a deal like, you know, kind of talk about some of those teams that were kind of looking at you in regards to that. But yeah, man, uh, it was a team that I talked to Coach Izzo from uh, the Seahawks, Larry Izzo. Um, that was probably one of the coolest conversations I had during the draft process, just because he um, is like, quote unquote, considered one of the best special teams players of all time. Um, so, you know, I knew that there were several special teams guru guys that were hitting me up during this whole time. And I was, I knew that I wasn't going to go play for every one of them. Right. So I asked coach Izzo, like, all the questions I could, like taking notes, like I'm asking uh, Coach Judge from the Giants, all the questions I can, taking notes, because I know they know what it takes to succeed at special teams. And they told me about, you know, being fast, told me about being lean, told me about being smart. And like, so I started, I, I knew I wasn't going to be at both of those places, you know, but um, so I took advantage of all those conversations, was, you know, trying to convince the Titans to come back in the draft and draft me because they didn't have any more picks left. And they said they were going to, but I think they figured I was going to be a free agent. They didn't, there was no need to do that. There was a few teams like that. No, but I mean, Tampa, Florida, like I was turned up, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah and, uh, Coach Bowles and all the players and Tom Brady. I mean, literally, I'm just like, but this is no, this is the best pick. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling great right now, you know? <laughs> yeah. Bucks weren't playing. They weren't playing with them picks. You know? Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm saying, man. But um, yeah. you've talked about it a little bit, Grant, you know, just kind of diving a little bit deeper into it. Besides the obvious options, you know, you talked about Devin, you talked about Levante. Tom Brady's obviously a good guy to be playing with. Besides some of those guys, what are some of the players who you're thinking of like, man, I'm really excited to be playing with these guys, both on, let's say, offense and defense and even special teams as well? That's why we feel. Okay. Yeah, him and uh, number 33. I got gotcha. you. Um, Jordan Whitehead? Yes. Um, Winfield, because somebody I looked up to for a long time um, from the same district, um, high school with me, played against him in high school, was the only player, I think, him and Patrick Carr, um, mm-hmm. who played for, with us at Houston, um, he he was the only player. Winfield was the only player that had, like, ever just, like, really just made me go, oh, my goodness, like, watching the film. Because right. um, he never missed a tackle. Um, if he had the opportunity to boom somebody, he did. Yeah. Um, he caught all his picks. He scored on punt return. He just was a complete player and somebody that I looked up to immediately. Um, being in, in, and he was all bought into the to football. You know, he was doing everything he could. Um, and so just even seeing and hearing about him, listening to some of the vets talk about him, the way he came in as a rookie um, and – pretty much just started running the show. Um, just, I'm just excited to, to be around somebody like that um, and learn from him and also, you know, be considered a peer uh, with somebody uh, that I look up to, you know, that like that highly. Um, but yeah, just him really and uh, uh, Jordan Whitehead, just, just simply because of how he plays the game of football. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> Um, like I've never, I never heard him speak. Like I'm, I don't like none of that. I don't know him as a per- person, but just watching him on tape, um, you know, he just gives everything he has, and and you can trust him. Um, and so, being a linebacker, you want to be able to trust people behind you, because um, if you jump a route and you miss, you got to know that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and with with them two back there, I mean, it's not a question, you know. So, I'm excited with it with them and. I talked I talked uh, with Devin White a little bit, and uh, you know he's uh, very wise. Um, so I'm excited to just play with him and looking at his energy also on the field. He came out there and watched us for OTAs for a little bit, um, but really Levante David. Um, that is, I mean, I'm being that I play the same position as him. Um, 
and just watching him, all his movements are efficient and all his movements are purposeful. And um, we talk about speed, I'm watching film. Devin White is certainly the faster one, um, but they talk about Levante is very fast and he is very fast, but like watching him move, he just is not wasting any movement. Um, he's not wasting movement. He's being smart. He's calling out stuff that you can see it on tape. And so I'm eager to know his routine. I'm eager to know what he does to prepare himself. I'm eager to learn the certain techniques and man covers that allow him to be a better cover backer than everybody else, you know? So that is probably my number one, like I'm ready to just get behind him and, and just learn in regards to Tom Brady, Whatever Tom Brady's been doing up until this point, I just don't want to bother him. I still don't let him. I still let him do whatever he does. Like you know, I've seen. I've, I've been. I've had my little conversations with people. I wanted to like, you know, Antonio Brown talking to him. You know, uh, had two words with Grant. Like I'm cool. You know, Tom Brady. I just probably what's up, Tom. You know, I don't want to throw off nothing Tom is doing. Yeah. So, um, but eager, eager, eager to see his preparation. You know, because I've never really been around. I've never met somebody that I feel like gives as much of himself into this game as I do, or prepares himself uh, for their job as much as I do. So, uh, looking to see. Um, I really just excited to see him uh, to do that. You know, so yeah, 